the thing that I think of too is the idea of consent. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of consent in Percy Jackson and there isn't any in Harry Potter. So, like, one of the things I remember saying a couple years ago is, like, why didn't anyone ask Harry what he wanted to do? Like, this is his mother. It's his mother, and it's his life. Shouldn't somebody ask him what he, what he wants? Shouldn't they ask him? Like, this is something that we think might protect you if you stay at the Dursleys. Do you want to stay there? It's, like, the absolute bare minimum if you mm -hmm. see children like human beings is to ask them what they want in their own life. Yeah. And that never happens in Harry Potter. She never even thinks of that, of like, and it's just a crazy thing that all of these adults are supposed to be the people you look up to and none of them ever think to just ask him what he wants. Where in like Harry, in like Percy Jackson, people are always asking Percy that stuff of like, are you sure that you want to do this? Are you sure you want to go to camp? Are you sure you want to do the prophecy like we just read sea of monsters chiron that entire book is trying to dad him and is like i want you to stay at camp and not go anywhere because i'm afraid you're going to get hurt please just stay here please 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 because i don't want you to get hurt and that's like a cons consistent thing through the books is people are worried about him and they're asking him if he's okay and they know that he has to do these things but they don't like it and they're telling him if you don't want to do this you don't have to and it's like that just general just like basic idea of consent is there in that story where you compare that like in percy jackson you don't like the gods because they don't treat people like that they don't ask their kids what they want they don't treat them like they have an opinion about anything and so you don't like them but that's mm -hmm. just how everybody is in harry potter and it's such like a small basic thing to ask a kid like what do you want to do but it yeah. like but you're just treating them like a human, like you would anybody else. And when you have a kid yourself, like J.K. Rowling did at the time, and you're writing stories for children, I honestly don't know why you would write stories for children if you're not going to treat them like that. And especially the core demographic of these books, like that 9 to 13-ish years old, that's when kids need the most flexibility. I'm raising an 11-year-old, you know, yeah. like he needs the flexibility to be able to be able <laughs> I want to do this with my day. I want to be able to do these things at school. Um, yeah, it's so what's interesting too about taking away choices and any sort of consent from Harry is that a, I mean, a keystone part of the hero model is the refusal of the call. You know, like the hero has to have that moment where they're saying, do I really want everything in my life to change or am I going to actually take this on? And it can be short. I mean, like Frodo's is very short. Frodo's is a quick, like, I don't want it here. You take the ring back before he's mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah, maybe I am the person that needs to do this. Harry gets, you know, he has chosen as a baby by somebody else. We kind of get an illusion of there could have been another chosen one with Neville, but it's not like he could just be like, Hey, Neville, I don't want to do this anymore. It's your turn. Like, um, so there, like you said, there's no choice. And yeah, it takes out a really popular and almost integral part of storytelling for uh, heroes. Yeah, and well, it makes your hero character like an actual person, like an actual character, mm -hmm. because nobody is going to be able to handle that all the time. Mm -hmm. They're going to have crises of faith. They're going to be like, how can I do this? How is it possible that I could even do this? I might fuck this up somehow. And I don't want to be the one to hurt everybody, but I'm not sure what to do. And nobody will tell me what to do. And I was scared that I'm going to let everybody down. Like, that's a totally normal thing to feel when you feel like all these people are depending on you. And so having Harry, he has those moments, but not really. People get mad at him when he has them. Like in Or the Phoenix and stuff, that's basically an entire book of him having those sort of moments a lot. And people tell him that he's wrong for being upset and he's wrong for questioning stuff and he's wrong for being angry at people. And he's completely with, he should be upset. Like, I don't know how he shouldn't be upset with what's going on with him in that book. And so it's like, he's not allowed to be that. Like Ron gets mad at him in the last book and it's like, you don't know what to do. And it's like, he's 17, he's 17 years old. He's supposed to be your best friend. And he, his like person that would never tell him anything just died in front of him. 
and left him with all of these questions, never told him anything and just told him what he was supposed to do, but never actually told him anything of how he's supposed to do it. And now he's just like left trying to figure that out. And you as his one of his best friends is constantly making him feel bad about himself because he hasn't figured it out enough. And it's like, if you feel stressed out about this, how the hell do you think he feels yeah. knowing that all of this is up to you? Like, I cannot even, I cannot even fathom like a reality where like Grover or Annabeth would ever make Percy feel that way ever. Even when things were as bad as they could be between Annabeth and Percy because of the Luke stuff and like the fourth book and some of the fifth book, there's none of that ever. They're still very protective of him they still want to help him. They're trying to come up with all of these plans to help him. They don't want to tell him about the whole, you might get stabbed to death part of the prophecy until it happens. And even when it happens, like Annabeth is like shaking because she's afraid of how he's going to react because she knows how horrible this is. Like they still want to protect him from everything, even if they have problems with each other because of all of the stress they're under. I just can never imagine a version of Annabeth or Grover or anyone else even and even the other kids, like even like somebody like Clarice that sometimes argues with Percy, I can't imagine a character like Clarice even coming up to him and being like, you're taking too long to figure everything out. It's like the opposite. They want to help him because they know how hard this is. And they yeah. keep asking him like, are you sure you can do this? Are you sure you don't want somebody else to help you? All that kind of stuff. And it, that's like how it's, it sounds so pathetic but it's because it's like the bare minimum of yeah. treating somebody with like basic levels of respect and like just like personhood is to just ask them if they're okay instead of just forcing them to do this stuff because you want them to do it. <laughs>